Welcome back, Seth Ling here. And today I wanna to show you a new data pack that I made for Minecraft 1.13. Uh, this is a robot arm base defense system. And basically what it does is it's a robot arm. It'll find any mob that's in range, pick it up and drop it into the lava. Uh, it doesn't work just for creepers. It actually works for any kind of mobs. If I just drop a few sheep down here, it'll find them, it'll pick them up, it'll drop into the lava. So I guess it's less of a base defense system and more of a mob killing system. Uh, it also doesn't just work on the ground if I put put a guy up here or even say I put it on top of its own base station. Uh, it'll eventually find it, pick it up, and drop it right on in. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, you might be wondering how I got these columns of diamonds to appear in tilted configurations. And of course the answer is armor stands. Each armor stand is wearing a diamond block on its head and it's basically I've posed the head so that it has the correct tilt so that the diamond blocks look like they line up at or form a single column, but each block is actually its own armor stand. Um, the problem of how to actually get a, a robot arm to animate like this is actually a difficult one. So this robot arm has four segments. Uh, each has nine blocks in it. So one, two, three, four, uh, and then it's got a claw at the end. Uh, each uh, there's also four joints. So there's one at the base, two, three, four. So each joint has two degrees of freedom or two angles that it can rotate. So there's a uh, yaw, which is this type of rotation, and there's a pitch, which is this type of rotation. And so each angle actually has the same amount of degrees of freedom as a player looking around. And so the problem of how to basically modify each of those angles uh, so that the robot arm, the tip of the robot arm, hits the exact position of the the mob that is trying to target, or or the, the you know the the spot over the lava that it wants to actually target them. Oh, I think I grabbed the one from on top of the base station that time. I'll put another one up there. Um, yeah, that problem of how to how to modify those those joint angles is it's called inverse kinematics, or that's the solution. Uh, inverse kinematics is the study. Basically, you want you know you want the robot arm to go somewhere, say this creeper. You know you want the robot arm to go here, but uh, you have to figure out what the angles are of all these joints so that the robot arm will smoothly animate towards the target rather than like jumping there directly. Uh, and so my there's ways to solve the inverse kinematics problem uh, with like calculus. I did a little bit more of an approximate approach. So there's eight joint angles, right? There's four joints and each one has a, a yaw and a pitch. And so uh, what I did was I made small adjustments to each of those eight angles, uh, you know, either the, like again, the yaw or the pitch, did very small adjustments and saw what each of those adjustments to each of those angles did to the distance between the claw and its target. And basically if the small adjustment made a small decrease in the distance between the claw and its target, then that's a, a good adjustment and you want to do, you want to adjust that angle in that direction. If it increased the distance between the claw and the target, then you want to go maybe the opposite direction. It also tells you which angles you should rotate more or less because they will make a bigger difference in decreasing that distance between the claw arm and the target. So it's an approximation method uh, to figure out how to adjust each of the angles so that you eventually get to the target. Inverse kinematics, it's a pretty cool technique. Uh, the robot arm, as you've seen, it, it doesn't have any collision detection, by the way. Uh, it can kind of go through itself and through the ground, and it'll do that <laughs> if it has to. I tried to constrain some of the angles so that it wouldn't do that as often, because I think it looks kind of weird, but eh, it still has to do it sometimes. I think it still looks super neat. If you want to try this out for yourself, uh, there is a download link in the description to the data pack. Uh, currently, I've, I have it implemented so that it'll appear at this exact x, y, z coordinate. So uh, x equals 110, y equals 65, z equals 134. That's where it's going to appear. You might have to reload the data pack once you've actually loaded the world uh, to get it to appear there. But uh, once you do, it'll it'll do this exact thing. The yeah, the coordinates are just kind of hard coded in. Oh man, it's having some trouble, but it'll get there eventually. <laughs> yeah. So if you want to try it out for yourself, you can you can take a look. That's about it. Thanks for watching.